Hi everyone, this is some instruction for the course MEC 454. We're going to start in this semester, you are building a numerical computation code for an internal combustion engine. And this relies heavily on MATLAB, and so we're going to go through some of the basics that um, are explained on the web, but uh, in a more uh, succinct or in a more uh, specific way applied to this course. So I'm using an environment, it's called uh, Octave or GNU Octave, G-N-U Octave. This, is, uh, this was created originally as a clone to MATLAB and it's uh, since evolved a bit and it has a couple of differences, but it's mostly compatible with MATLAB. So the environment looks probably very different from uh, the MATLAB environment if you're using MATLAB itself, although it has all of the same, uh, all of the same features. Here it's uh, initially when we open it, uh, we see the command window where I can type, for example, x equals 3, and Octave will return the answer here, x equals 3. And if I now call x, we have stored this value. I can then compute, let's say, x plus 2. And here the answer is equal to 5. Um, we also have an editor here at the bottom. I can click on the editor. And this is the same editor you have in, or similar to the editor you have in MATLAB, where I can write different scripts or different functions, and there's a documentation pane, which is just a help uh, menu. Okay, so let me just clear, oh, let me CLC, there we go. Let me clear the command window so that we have room to work. Um, we're now in, uh, you'll see here, the path to my current directory is actually in numerical assignment in three. I'm recording this a bit late, um, although we're gonna start with how to build a basic function compute the isentropic uh, to compute the isentropic relations for uh, our internal combustion engine so in uh, numerical assignment one here I'm going to open the editor we want to build a function which computes uh, different equations here I know it's going to be p2 is equal to p1 times uh, what is it the compression ratio raised to the power k and there's other, uh, let's say T2 is equal to T1 times R raised to the power K minus one, like this. Um, let me, just so I just don't give the solution to people, let me just make one example here where now our function is only going to compute P2 is equal to P1 R to the K. So right now, if I were to save this file, here it's going to save it in the current directory. I just press Control S, you can't see this. I'm going to save this as uh, isentropic EX, for example. Save, and now it's saved here. I can see it in the file description, isentropic EX.m. Now, this is not a function yet. Right now, it's just a single line of a single equation. In fact, if I come into the command window, and I try to run this, I think I can just type the name error, it gives me an error, it says P1 is undefined because this function or this file here has no notion of what P1 is or R or K. So I want this to be a function and a function is defined, it has inputs and outputs and it has a name. So I'm going to give it a name, isentropic EX and after that I'm going to list the inputs. This particular function is going to receive an input P1, and then put R, and then put K. This is a bit different from uh, from the um, from the description of the numerical assignment one. And to complete the description, I also have to start this line by the keyword function. So now this defines that text following is going to be a MATLAB function, and I have to give it the outputs. I want it to output P2. And just for the sake of completeness, I'm going to make it output a second uh, number. Here we're going to call this uh, C. This is a made up output. Again, I just don't want to give you all of the answers. Okay, so now this stop line defines that this is a function. It has two outputs that are listed in the square brackets here. That's P2 and C. It has a name. Here is isentropic underscore EX, and it has three inputs, P1, R, and K in the round brackets. 
now below and it's good practice to indent so I'm gonna put two spaces here so that I can distinguish between what is the header of the function or the, the function definition and what is the, the body of the main body of the function and here I just assign that p1 times r to the power k so I perform this computation within whenever this function is called and it returns the value p2 and you'll notice I'm returning it, I'm computing it and assigning it to a variable that is the same as one of the outputs here. It does not need to be so. I could compute a function or a variable that is not in the outputs. Let's uh, compute zeta is equal to r plus k. This has no physical meaning. Uh, it's just for example purposes. And then I really want to return the value c, which is equal to the square root of zeta, like this. So now here I'm computing a particular variable which is not going to be returned on the outputs. And here I'm computing c, which is actually going to be returned on the output, which uses this intermediate value zeta. Here I'm just going to point out it's good practice to align so just as it was good practice to uh, indent the lines inside the function, it's also good practice to just align the equal sign so it's nice and readable. Here I'll put a space around the pluses so that it's a bit more spaced out. Uh, one, last, one last detail is that if I write the function like this, every time it is called, here let me save the function, I'll just hit Control S. Every time I run this function, uh, output will be printed to the screen whenever these lines are computed. So here, let me go into the command window and let me call my function. So to call a function, I would just write out its name, isentropic ex, and then in the parentheses, I give values to the inputs. So I want it to be a value of 100 for p1, a value of 8, for r and a value of 1.4 for k. And you'll notice there's no units. I'm the one deciding what the units are. Uh, yep, yeah, what the units are going into and out of this function. I'm going to press enter. And here you see, let's decipher a bit of what's happening here. First, uh, Octave or MATLAB is going to print out, in this case, p2 equals 1837.9, zeta equals 9.4 c equals 3.0659. This outputs, or these three lines of output, come from within the function. These three lines are output as the function is uh, run. So that output comes from these three lines over here, which I may not necessarily want to see. And then the final line, answer equals 1837.9, is actually the output of the function. And you'll notice here, it only prints out a single number, even though I asked the function to print out two numbers, or to return two numbers, p2 and c. Okay, so let's tackle each of these independently. I don't want to see this output right away. Uh, for one, the output that I actually want is going to be printed at the end no matter what. And also, if I were to call this function repeatedly tens of thousands of times in a code, which you're actually going to do later on in the semester, uh, I don't want all this output to be printed to the screen. It slows down the speed at which the software will run, uh, and it's just overly annoying. So I'm going to come into the editor here, and to suppress the output, I'm simply going to terminate every line with a semicolon, like this. I'm going to hit Control S. And to save the file, and here, let me call that again. So one feature is I can just press the up arrow, and it brings back the last command that I typed up. I'm going to press Enter. And now I see I don't have any intermediate or any output coming from within the function. I only have the output that comes from the function itself. Except now I only have one number. So now in order to get both the numbers p2 and c, I actually have to tell Octave or MATLAB to store these values into specific variables. So here I'm going to tell MATLAB, please store these into p2 and c. And then I'm going to press 
Actually, here I'll call this C2. I'm going to press enter. And now, now MATLAB is returning both, or in this case, Octave is returning both the value of P2 and it says C2 is equal to 3.0659. So whatever value was computed into the variable C, that gets returned and that gets saved to the variable C2. You'll notice that the names don't have to match on the output. Your P2 matches the P2 inside the function definition. That is this P2 here. I named this variable the same as this variable within my function. And here, C2, I named this variable differently from the variable C that's here defined within my function. And that's absolutely okay. In fact, I would even say that that's maybe even encouraged. So every, within the, um, within the function, this is what we call dummy variables. So the variables P1, R, and K, those names only have meaning inside of this function here. And P2 and C, they only have meaning inside of this function here. So if I come inside the command window, even though I call this function isentropic EX and passed it some number, if I ask Octave what's the value of P1, it doesn't know. Because P1 only existed as the code was running or as the computer was looking inside this function to compute these different values. Okay, so now I have a function that can be given a value of P1 or value of pressure, a value of compression ratio, and a value of a specific heat ratio K. It can compute a value P2 and a made up value C that corresponds to nothing and I just put it there for the sake of having two different uh, of having two different outputs. So this is essentially the basic form that your function should take in uh, the first numerical assignment.